welcome to another Eric Waite Whiskey Study. And in this video, I'm gonna give sort of a summary of Bourbon Month 2019. I will list all the bourbons that I reviewed during March 2019, 20 in all. Some of them were reviewed twice because some of them I did an uncorking uh, during a live stream. I'll then cover the top five bourbons of Bourbon Month and uh, mention some honorable uh, mentions, some of that were really, really close that would have made my top 10 if I was doing a top 10, um, and as well as a few disappointments. Um, I had some absolutely spectacular guests uh, during the month. You know, if you don't do a YouTube channel, uh, I don't think you really understand how challenging it can be to do everything it takes to create a video, to arrange live streams, all the technical difficulties, arranging schedules, editing, yada, yada. There's really a lot of work that goes into it. So if there is a YouTube channel that you really, really enjoy, and they, you can tell they really put a lot of work into it, you know, um, give them a thumbs up, show them some love, uh, because they are working really, really hard at it. Now, while I am uh, talking about these bourbons, I'm gonna be sipping the Orphan Barrel uh, rhetoric age 22 years this is one i opened up uh, actually a couple of years ago uh, very early in my uh, whiskey journey i've already reviewed this i was gonna do a re-review during bourbon month uh, march 2019 um, but i ran out of time i have a few others that i haven't opened yet but again, I didn't make it in time. I may review them later this year, or I may just hold on to them until Bourbon Month 2020. So you have something to uh, look forward to. Alrighty, uh, during this month, I also had some absolutely uh, spectacular guests. I, I really, really, really appreciate them coming on. Let's stop, pause, and take a little whiff. Classic bourbon notes, caramel corn, Vanilla, cinnamon, little oakiness to it, slight cherry notes, nutmeg, vanilla on the palate. Mm. Mm. Nice. Let's move on. So the guests that I had during this month, and I want to give a special uh, shout out to them. First, I had Jason the Mashin Drum, and actually a couple of days uh, after this is posting, uh, we'll be meeting up in, in Texas. In fact, uh, at the end of this premiere, when this premieres, he'll be going on live, and I suspect Jason is even watching this now during the premiere and is in the chat room. If so, hey, Jason. <laughs> anyway, so I really want to thank Jason for coming on. Jason... Um, really knowledgeable about uh, bourbons and he's also not stuck or I'm gonna say stuck I want to be a he didn't just focus on bourbons he's really quite broader than than that as well really enjoyed ha having you on brother and looking forward to meeting you in person uh, at Chris bourbon insane and uh, I think uh, <laughs> I think Jason and I and maybe a few others have had some uh, uh, influence on him. He now seems to be drifting from the bourbon trail and heading over into scotch. <laughs> but really, really enjoying his channel as well, and it was great having him on. Kyle. Kyle from Bourbon Blind. Brother, if you're watching this, I want to thank you very much because, um, you know, scheduling people to come on, and I had a couple other people that I had lined up, but because of schedule conflicts and so forth, it didn't quite work out. And that's just the way it goes. I try to plan things, everything in advance, but sometimes the last second or very late, someone has to drop out due to family work or whatever. Um, and so Kyle, on sort of short notice, stepped up and, and joined me. And I really enjoyed uh, doing a, a live stream with him. If you guys didn't see that, you, you're gonna wanna check that out. Um, and I would have liked to spend more time with him I, I, and hope to do something again with him in the future. I really, really enjoyed getting to know him. Um, and then Scott from My Bourbon Journey had a fantastic time uh, with him. And he introduced me to an absolutely spectacular bourbon, which I'll be talking about in just a second here. And then finally, 
uh, Chad from It's Bourbon Night came on. Sarah couldn't made it, make it. She was tied up w uh, with work, but that was okay because Chad and I had a fantastic time. And he also, in terms of the bourbon he chose, he wanted to do but was spectacular as well. I don't know, I'll talk about that in, in just a minute. So again, thumbs up to all my guests. Uh, love y'all and, and thank you very much. All right, so 20 bourbons in roughly 30 days. Um, some of them reviewed sort of twice. Um, so real heavy content uh, in this month. I never had done so many reviews in such a short period of time. Other than Isla, that was quite uh, Isla month. That was quite busy as well. All right, so we had the Booker's Kitchen Table 2018 Bullet Bourbon Barrel Strength Makers Mark Private Select uh, Elijah Craig Small Batch Barrel Proof Cask C917. Just right there in those first four are some heavy hitters right out the gate. Um, that's some tough competition there. Um, the Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve, and that was a bottle that I actually brought back from Kentucky, uh, and it has my name on it, and I put the thumbprint and all that. So that was absolutely fantastic. It was one I had saved for a special occasion. Then we had the Four Roses Single Barrel Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, this was from Warehouse RS, barrel number 54.5F and at 50% alcohol by volume or 100 proof. Uh, and then we had the Sonoma Bourbon uh, Whiskey, so one here from California, a uh, High West American Prairie Bourbon, that was from uh, Utah. Then we had Jefferson's Ocean Aged Cast Strength Kentucky uh, Straight Bur Bourbon Whiskey, which did a second aging or finishing out at sea. Really interesting bourbon, had a lot of salty notes. So if you didn't see my review of that, you definitely want to check that out. That's actually a bourbon I'm now going to use as a blender to add a little bit of more uh, interest to some uh, other uh, bourbons. Then we had the Wild Turkey Long Branch Small Batch Kentucky Straight Bourbon. In case you guys don't know, small batch is not a legal term. Anybody can call anything a small batch, just to let you know. But anyhow, that one was a surprise because it's only like 43 ABV. Matthew McConaughey is the man behind it. Um, it's um, finished in a mesquite cask, which I think gives it an interesting profile. I really liked exploring a few uh, finished bourbons this month. And even though it's a lower ABV, you know, it's not a big puncher, say like um, the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. It still, I thought, was a high quality bourbon, an easy sipper, super silky, uh, that was good on its own. So I think the fact that they give it some interesting character to it with the mesquite is what makes it uh, a real good value play. And I thought price wise, it wasn't overpriced uh, as well. All right, let's move on. Then we have the Few Bourbon Whiskey. This was from uh, Illinois. That one had a high rye content. I thought it was very, very, very good, but um, a little youthful. Um, you might want to check out my view on that if you like high rye bourbons. Then we had the Wild Turkey Master's Keep Revival Oloroso Sherry uh, Finished Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. That one I did an uncorking with, uh, with, with Kyle. This is one he chose. Um, and, and then I reviewed it again. Uh, that one, I'm gonna save my comments. I'll come back to it and talk a little about that in, in just a minute. Uh, then the W.L. Weller Special Reserve. That one, it's a good weeded bourbon, but uh, the prices are going nuts. Some people are still able to get these at the $20, $22 range, maybe even under $30 range. But um, I paid like $40 for it, and just looking across uh, the United States and what this thing's going for, we're talking up to $100, $150. And one of the themes I sort of talked a lot about, about uh, during Bourbon Month, let's take a little sip. Because we do get a little parched with so much talking. Um, is there's a sort of insanity uh, around the United States and the sort of, of course in the secondary markets and sort of the fads, uh, prices jumping up. But I noticed some particular regions tend to be a little more crazy with the prices. And I would say New York seems to be like the worst state uh, for prices. But let's move on. The Blanton's Original Kentucky a Single Barrel Straight uh, Bourbon. Real pretty bottle. I thought it was a good classic profile for the bourbon. 
I, if I recall correctly, I think I paid around $60 for it. Um, and that's where the competition is. Is uh, It's a good quality bourbon, but there are a lot of similar bourbons or, or, or similar in profile or similar in quality, and yet for about 20 bucks less. And I think that was a real challenge with that one, but I liked it. The Colonel E.H. Taylor Small Batch Bourbon Whiskey. Really enjoyed it. Uh, if you can find it, I think it's a value play around still around 40 to 50 dollars and i'm i'm keep your fingers crossed that that one doesn't go crazy and start uh, jumping up because it has the potential to uh, the wild turkey rare breed proof kentucky straight bourbon whiskey that was a, a little one that i brought back from kentucky along with this barrel head i've got here over my shoulder um I really enjoyed that one and it's about two thirds uh, uh, through the bottle and it's been open for a couple years. And one of the things I noted in the review, if you haven't seen it, is how um, it's still fresh. There's a teensy weetsy bit of oxidization going over there, but it's not bad. It's fine. It's still good. Um, and so one of the topics I covered in that video was uh, how long whiskeys are good for once they've been opened. Um, so you might want to check that video out if you haven't seen that one. The Willet Pot Still Bourbon Kentucky Straight Whiskey. Beautiful bottle, a decent bourbon, quality price ratio, eh, it was good, it didn't wow me. I thought it was just okay. Is it more than just a pretty bottle? I'm kind of on the fence on that one. Quality price ratio, kind of on the fence about that one. It was just sort of an okay bourbon, no big wows. But you might want to check out my video on that uh, and see the notes. And I also included a video from uh, the producer uh, to give you a little more, more background about the, uh, the bourbon. Really interesting just to see that on its own. So if you haven't seen that video, you want to check that out. The Redemption High Rye Nine Year Old Barrel Proof. I love that uh, bourbon. Was not expecting to love it that much. It was the mid palette that I just absolutely loved. If you haven't seen that video, you want to check that one out. Um, the mid palette was like root beer and sarsaparilla. And if you haven't had sarsaparilla, sarsaparilla is somewhat similar to root beer. Um, don't see sarsaparilla much these days. Uh, when I was a kid, you could get a bottle of sarsaparilla and there were also sarsaparilla candies. It had that root beer barrel candy character in the, in the mid palette. And then it had this black licorice and anise notes on the back end. Some people don't like that. I like black li licorice. I really liked it. I, I thought it was, it, it was great. I, I really loved it. The Old Ezra 7 Kentucky Straight Bourbon. This is one that was suggested to me by uh, Scott. Uh, my bourbon journey we did an uncorking and then um i did a, a review full review of it later on really really enjoyed it however um i've been going back to it afterwards and i think my initial impression was higher than it is now it's still very 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 very, very good i still really 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 like it i'm just not as wowed by it as i was before when i go back and start comparing it to some of these other uh, bourbons Let's take another little sip because we get parched. Mm. Nice. And then finally was the Joseph Magnus Straight Bourbon Whiskey. That one, wow. Wow. Absolutely love that one. And then, of course, the very final one I did was the Weller foolproof bourbon whiskey which uh, I <laughs> I posted that one on April 1st April Fool's Day and if you haven't seen that review you might want to check that one out <laughs> alrighty oh gotta have some fun you can't take this stuff too seriously you gotta have a good time alright so let me cover my uh, disappointment then I'll talk about my honorable mentions and then I'll get to my top five I'll save that part for last The disappointments. Um, High West American Prairie Bourbon. This is one that I did with Chris from Bourbon Insane. It wasn't good on the uncorking. It wasn't good later. It's not, I would say it's not bad. It's just pure meh. It's like pfft, a mediocre bourbon. I think typically sells in between $22 and $29. However, I'm seeing this thing for over $40. 
I would say it's a pass. It's a pass for anything over $20. Anything over $20, I would say absolutely pass. Huge disappointment, did not care for it. I have not had any other High West uh, bourbons. I'm hoping other ones are better. I've heard good things about some of the other bourbons, but second one was the Sonoma Bourbon Whiskey. Um, you know, I, I love California. Uh, I want to support my local distillers, and I actually have some other California bourbons that I haven't reviewed. I have one from San Diego Distillery that I picked up when I was visiting, uh, when met up with uh, Bill, the whiskey dick. Um, when we met up down there, I went and visited the distillery. Just didn't get around to it. Um, I have a couple others here from California that I can get, get to. Um, I'll save them for a, another date. But the Sonoma Bourbon Whiskey, this is one I did with uh, John from Blind Whiskey Reviews. We had actually had another bourbon planned. I bought him um, a, a bottle, a diff completely different bottle. It was a special bottle from uh, k &L. My bottle, thankfully I opened it a couple of days before we went live. My bottle was actually bad. It tasted like black mold. L I mean, literally, it was really, 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 really bad. I've never had anything like that in a whiskey before, so I had to return it. And with such short notice, we had to come up with another bottle. Now, John's bottle was fine. And the funny thing is, we both had the same cask, and we both, our bottle numbers are only like one off. So who knows what happened? I, I don't know. Anyway, so we ended up doing the Sonoma Bourbon Whiskey. Uh, he thankfully had a bottle. And it was kind of actually cool because two Californians doing a review of a California bourbon. But uh, we both sort of had the same take on it, that it was really green, particularly on the uncorking. Um, it just seemed too young. It needed more time. It, I likened it as smelling it tasted like something that had just a piece of wood that had been planed in a wood shop. You know, you take a planer and, and you go and you kind of get that fresh peel of wood that comes off. That's what it smelled and tasted like. It had some cinnamon notes and some other things to it, but again, it's a pass. Straight, I mean, I think it's about two years old at most. It needs some more time and it needs probably different weather than Sonoma's gonna provide. It needs some more uh, interaction with, with the oak. Um, anyway, enough of that one. The third one, it's a very, 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 very good bourbon. Nothing against the bourbon itself, but it wasn't yet. It was a disappointment. And that was actually, here right now in the comment section, if you're watching this on the premiere, what is my third disappointment? The third disappointment is, Wild Turkey Mashers Keep Revival, Oloroso Sherry Finished Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Why was that a disappointment? Because it's $150 a bottle. Um, even on the re-review, I thought the sherry notes and the bourbon notes weren't harmonized. They were in conflict with each other. Um, there wasn't a good transition. Um, they just seemed like two whiskeys that are fighting with each other. And that's not absolutely uh, necessary. You can do a, a sherry cask finished uh, bourbon that works out really, really well because uh, I had one later on that was absolutely superb. Anyway, so my plan for that, it's a beautiful bottle, beautiful box. My plan for that one is to actually come back to it in a year. Let's see what happens with that bottle as it's had some more time and see if it opens up. I may even, you know, take a little bit of nip to, uh, of it between now and say March 2020 or whenever I decide to do bourbon month. I may try it between now and then, but let's give it a year and see if it opens up. Let's see if it becomes much more integrated uh, and develops better. But I'll do a re-review next year. We'll see how that goes. Alrighty. So again, not a bad bourbon, just not worth 150 bucks. I wouldn't pay over $100 for that. All right, now the moment y'all have been waiting for, which is the top five. Uh, Maker's Mark Private Select, number five. Um, Maker's Mark Private Select. Um, weeded bourbons, because they don't have a little bit of rye in it, um, are a little bit challenged, or they don't have as much Ryan, are a little bit challenged to come with some character uh, that other bourbons can have, 
by turning up the spice notes uh, in the mash bill. But what Maker's Mark does that's absolutely brilliant is uses interstaves and they have a recipe of various interstaves that can provide different notes. And the result is with these five different potential combinations of interstaves inside is they have like a different, a thousand different bourbons that you can have um, through the, the process. So it's the same basic um, bourbon as the Maker's 46. Um, and then they just uh, uh, get an extra oomph uh, through the staves. And you can get completely different bottles from completely different uh, retail stores because stores such as the local store where I bought, uh, actually, I bought, that was one I brought back from Kentucky. Uh, but my local store here has one that uses a heavier, the mocha staves. So it has more heavier mocha character to it. Um, the one that I reviewed actually had more, um, the Maker's 46, the 46 staves. Anyway, so you, two different people with two different bottles of uh, the Private Select can have completely two different bourbons, different characters to them based on the inner staves. And they, that was absolutely fantastic. In fact, the funny thing is the spice notes, not the fruit and all that, but just the spice notes actually reminded me a little bit of the Compass Box uh, Spice Tree or Extravaganza. And coincidentally, uh, John Glazer originally, that was the same thing he did. He used these uh, inner staves to pro provide extra staves. Turned out he got his hand slapped by the, the Scotch authorities, so he, he couldn't keep doing that. But anyway, anyway, so number five, Maker's Mark Private Select. All right, so number, coming at number four is the Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Hmm. That's also a bottle that you can get special bottlings from your local store. And the quality price ratio tends to be really, really, really high. Um, they keep them reasonably priced. So mine I actually picked up from the distillery, but uh, local stores here are um, um, selling them special bottlings that were just for them. However, I have heard, I've not seen this in writing confirmed, I have heard that's actually gonna go on hold for a while due to the popularity of the bourbon uh, and stock running low. So if you can get a Knob Creek single barrel reserve at your local store and you haven't had one and you can get them under $50, I would highly recommend grabbing one uh, because when they aren't available, or when they're not releasing any new ones, you know what's gonna happen to the price. Price is gonna go up, people are gonna be grabbing them. So if you can grab one now, I highly recommend it. All right, coming at number three is Booker's Kitchen Table 2018 04. Uh, this one, I was less than impressed on the uncorking. Um, to me, um, the wood seemed overbearing on this one. However, once it got past the shoulder, uh, it really opened up and really became absolutely fantastic. And that's when it went onto my top uh, five list. Uh, I know Bill, the Whiskey Dick, uh, you know, Booker Bill, um, these are some of his favorites. Um, and I was kind of like, you know, Bill, I don't know what you see in this, but, you know, can't judge a whiskey by neck pour. You got to give it a little bit of time. Some are absolutely fantastic coming out of the neck and some uh, not so much. Coming in at uh, number two. Coming at number two is the Elijah Craig Small Batch Barrel Proof Cask C917. I'm betting that some people thought that this would be my number one uh, for the month. However, this came in at number two, and I think some people are also gonna contest this when I say what my number one is. Elijah Craig Small Batch Barrel Proof I am hoping, 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 hoping that this remains true to its character, that it never goes the way of the fads and the crazy high prices, prices uh, that bourbons are going. Um, Jason C says he can get them about 50. I paid 70. I've seen it at 60. They are still somewhat readily available. They have the highest quality price ratio of any bourbon. They're absolutely fantastic. Um, I may have first tasted it when I visited Heaven Hill. I can't really remember. I think I did. 
But the first memorable experience I had with it when I was I met it with uh, uh, Scott and Bart at the Scotch system, it's fifth anniversary, was wowed by it then. So as soon as I got home, I ran out and bought a bottle. I also did a book review uh, with that. Um, if you haven't seen that one, check out the video and check out the book review. If you're looking for a book on um, bourbons, buy the one that I recommend in that video. All right, coming in at number one is the Joseph Magnus straight bourbon whiskey finished in sherry and cognac cast. Actually finished in Oloroso sherry and Pedro Jimenez sherry. This is one that was suggested by Chad of uh, It's Bourbon Night. Um, other people have been recommending it. I you know, heard sort of the chatter about it, but on the uncorking of this, I was really, really, really wowed. Now, there's a little bit of controversy about this because this isn't a classic bourbon. Um, it has these savory notes. If you haven't seen my full review of it, check it out and see my notes on this bourbon. It's a finished bourbon. I had several uh, finished bourbons, including the uh, Wild Turkey Long Branch. That's a finished bourbon. The Jefferson's Ocean, finished out at sea. That's a finished bourbon. I had another bourbon which I didn't get to during bourbon month, and that was uh, a port cask finished bourbon. So, mm, if you haven't seen my video on this, my full notes, check it out. This is my number one of the month because I didn't set up any uh, qualifications. I didn't say the highest quality price ratio bourbons. I didn't say the one, you know, non-finished bourbon. I didn't set up any other stipulations. I simply said my top bourbon of the month. This is classified as a bourbon, so it therefore qualifies regardless of the price. Price was $80. This is one that I suspect, I suspect, because it's somewhat challenging to find, you're gonna see this one go over $100. I paid 80, I think the MSRP is 100. I would not be shocked if this quickly went up to 120, 130 and up. So if you haven't gotten this one, I highly, highly recommend it. And uh, during the live stream uh, with uh, Chad from It's Bourbon Night, I had a little contest in which I was giving away uh, a, a, um, a, a sample of this. So I'll be sending out a five ounce sample. I'm also gonna send you um, another five ounce sample of the Elijah Craig C917. Why? Because, you know, I could see if Elijah Craig small batch was a person and Joseph Magnus was a person, I could see these two bourbons arguing, hey, that's not fair. That's not a classic bourbon. I should have been number one. Elijah Craig should have been number one. But Joseph Magnus would respond, hey, he liked me more than you. Nya, 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 nya. I I'm number one. Okay, so still the top classic bourbon profile, Elijah Craig. Top bourbon, regardless, was the Joseph Magnus. Absolutely uh, love this bourbon. Alrighty, that's it for this uh, review for the, or this video. I wanna thank everyone who's watched. I, think, I wanna thank everyone who's commented. I wanna thank everyone who's joined in the premiere. I wanna thank everyone who has been giving thumbs up, supporting, or subscribed. Um, I really, really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from my guests. This was an absolutely fantastic experience. Um, I, I enjoyed a lot doing the research and looking up notes and studying bourbon. I enjoyed reading the two books. Uh, I read two different books on bourbon during this time. One was, uh, another one was uh, uh, Bourbon Justice by Brian Herrera and Jason um, uh, Mashdrum had uh, the author on as a, a guest. That was absolutely fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. And I look forward to getting back into bourbon. However, uh, time to move on. I'm gonna be doing uh, some Texas whiskeys coming up next. Uh, just after this premiere, I'll be uh, jumping on a plane, heading down to Texas, visiting a bunch of distilleries, and hopefully bringing back some great memories, meeting some fantastic people, bringing back some fantastic whiskeys, because May 
2019 is gonna be Texas month and I'm hopefully I'm going to uh, line up some special guests from Texas as well. All right, until next time, cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.